welcome to this episode of The Dealer Playbook, a podcast that explores what it takes to create a thriving career right here in the retail auto industry. I'm your host, Michael Cirillo. So excited that you are here tuning in to hear my conversation with Jason Price, the CEO of CoVideo, about how you can use video to dominate. I'm looking forward to this conversation in particular. I mean, you, you know, congratulations, first of all, on everything that you've built. Uh, at CoVideo. I think it's tremendous. I was just watching one of your videos with the building and your team members and all this kind of stuff. So the first question that really comes to my mind is being a video company, how how have you guys adapted to COVID and remote work and all that kind of stuff? Sure. Yeah. And well, I mean, first of all, we're the like perfect place at the right time, right? <laughs> but but the other thing too, it's, you know, the, the company name being CoVideo in COVID also is sort of interesting, but it's almost like, you know, we were destined to be a part of what's going on right now. But look, we started this company a long time ago. We founded it in 04 and uh, we were way ahead of the curve in terms of video and, and what we wanted to accomplish. We, we went right after working with dealers and uh, specifically BDC departments on helping them engage their leads and convert more, more to the showroom at the time. And then when everything shut down in the pandemic, you know, dealers were, our customers were trying to find a way, how are we going to interact and engage our customers? How are we going to create this experience? Because at that time they really weren't going in the showroom, right? Showrooms have opened up and there's still some distancing going on, but uh, really there's no better way to uh, interact and create the message that you want to deliver to your customer uh, other than using video. So yeah, we're in the right place at the right time. Yeah. I I was, I was like, I don't know, should I ask him about the whole COVID, COVID video <laughs> thing? But but I'm glad you brought it up and it, it just shows kind of the culture of of your business, right? That it's like, hey, the, I mean, this is what it is. We didn't name this disease, but we we named our company and hey, let's let's the, I mean, there's got to be an SEO, a positive SEO impact on <laughs> <laughs> there probably is, but I'm sure we're not getting the traffic we want from that SEO. Interestingly enough, though, we're now Reddit famous because of our company name. Hey. Someone took a picture of our building and it trended up to the top of one of the subreddits. So <laughs> that's awesome, though. I think I wish I had a clever. I it, is it weird that I hope they name a disease after my. <laughs> 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 Anyways, and that is not to make light of the pandemic, no, but it not. certainly is one of those interesting things that. In 04, you could have never, ever uh, anticipated what happened, but here we are nonetheless. I do think it's interesting, though, like you said, perfectly kind of positioned. I mean, for those that aren't familiar with CoVideo, why don't you just give us the, the I guess, the synopsis of what it is, like, what what is your mission? What does it give the the dealership community the ability to do? Yeah, so it all starts with communication. So we have a video platform that um, our dealers use to communicate with their customers on many levels, right? So if you look at the BDC department, we just talked about that a little bit, whether it's a vehicle walk around or a personalized video introduction, right? It's all about creating that engagement from the massive amount of leads we're paying a lot of money for right. and try to convert that into a conversation, into a response. And then of course, getting them in the showroom or eventually buying a car. And then on the flip side, you have the service department. And so one of the areas where we make a, a huge impact is on those recommended repairs, right? So you take your vehicle in, it's a routine service, and all of a sudden you get the list. And there's these seven or eight things that you didn't really expect. And when we can document that with a video, right, there's the visual evidence. We have an 84% increase in, in RO penetration wow. when yeah. a video is included with that. And so this goes back to using it in the right moments, right? It's not like every time you have a car in the drive that you need to record a video of it, Right. Um, now we have some of our customers that say, well, we, we should, right. So that we can give them all the good news. And then if they eventually get a video down the road that has a repair they need, but that's, it's a lot of work, right. And we know that we want to make things as efficient as possible. The key that I found is if we're just on those recommended repairs, especially the unexpected ones, right. To be able to document that with the real evidence. So we kind of have the bookmark on both sides, really on the front end sell side to create that sort of personal engagement for a conversion. And then, uh, really showing those recommended repairs on the service side. Yeah, it, I, I love it for a couple of reasons. First, I mean, communication is something that I believe so deeply in. I, I wish more people could just pause for a second and realize that the manner in which we communicate or the effectiveness in which we communicate will either start the next world war <laughs> or keep it from happening. Right. And yeah, words matter, really. W words matter. You know, what's interesting, though, even coming down to a much more granular level, like you brought up the service kind of side of things, the back end. I mean, I just brought my vehicle in for service. Um, you you hope it would be as easy as just kind of setting the appointment. 
um, and then arriving on site and knowing what you should do. I've been in this industry, dude. Like I've been in this industry for 20, almost 25 years at this point. I drove up to the dealership and I'm like, where do I go? Well, like, do I pull around? I mean, I see right. a sign that says service. Do I pull around there? Do I pull straight in? Do I like, there was nothing. A ma- I, I, and, and then the, I mean, the experience was just, it was a, I mean, it was a dumpster fire front, you know, and it makes me so sad. It makes my bowels quiver, but I mean, like imagine <laughs> then the context of somebody, a, a service rep that works at the counter with a video solution where they could just say, Hey, Michael, so excited to have you in for your 10 o'clock appointment at, you, you know, on Friday. Here's what to expect. When you pull up, you're going to see these. this sign. You need to turn in there and just pull right up to the garage doors. They're going to open up automatically. Sit in your vehicle. We'll approach you. Here's what we do for COVID. Here's the precautions. We're, you know, like that would have been so delightful versus MC here standing like a fool in a service department waiting for five minutes without anybody even looking at me to acknowledge me, wondering if I'm in the right place, only to find out that, yes, in fact, you were not supposed to park in the service parking lot. You were supposed to drive your vehicle in. It, you know, like it was just, it was a disaster. And I, I I see so many applications where a simple video explanation, because we know they're not going to read. Sure. Let's not even get into the average population's reading comprehension levels. <laughs> And we write these fancy, well-articulated, like we're Downton Abbey. We write these emails. Dude, nobody, nobody's reading this email. No one. No. But and let's not even segment. talk about the, the grammatical errors. The, the all I, mean, I can't tell you what all. What the, the, we sometimes just go in and just audit the emails coming out. Right. And it's like, you know, where it's supposed to be an insert name. Yeah. Like we still run into so many times where it's literally insert name. Like they didn't even merge the name in and it's like, well, at least with this, you know, because of the visual piece of it, there's a little bit more quality control, but this goes back. So this is what you were talking about for me is the appointment confirmation. We're seeing that a lot. And um, it's actually what we, we really preach or the personal lines are amazing, but it goes back to efficiency. Uh, one, one can video, we call it a can video or an evergreen video right. recorded from the service manager or somebody from the service department one time perfectly articulated that goes out automatically with each appointment. I mean, this isn't like it's a lot of brain damage to get these videos done. And now to your point, the issue you had, which I just experienced that earlier this year. So it's a dealer that is a co-video customer, by the way. Oh no. Uh, they know me really well. <laughs> yeah. I pull in and I've been there before where they changed the, uh, the way you're supposed to pull in. So I guess there's like two sides and I went to the wrong side. Right. So I finally got that figured out. They took care of me. And then I go in and I'm just staring, you know, I'm sitting there for like five minutes and finally I'm like, I know the guy yells, John, like, is, should I go? Like, what's going on? He goes, Oh, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm trying to check in. He goes, Oh, we're doing that on the other side now. This is the quick loop. I said, okay, take care. And then now I, of course, I had to walk over the quick loop. So your point, yeah, it's just, it's, um, there's so much information they could put out there. Cause I think for us, like, like you, I've been in the auto industry working within it, right. Since 2004. And so you've been doing it for a long time. We know the space, we kind of know what to expect Right. And for someone just coming off the street. That's, that's coming in. There's probably an intimidation factor too. And that, that customer experience is a challenge, right? Cause then now what's a hell of a lot easier to do going straight to the Jiffy lube because they do make it a hell of a lot easier and right. they're constantly upselling you. They're in your face. And, and we talk about that with our dealers a lot right now, which is how can we, like customer experience, the, I mean, that, that term has been thrown around a lot lately. And, and video gives you an opportunity to bridge some of those gaps really easy. Yeah, I, I love it. And, you know, there's a massive opportunity here. I mean, we're, we are talking about video, but just to kind of close off the whole importance of the service side of things and how we could create a much more efficient communication ecosystem, if you will. I mean, there's a massive mm-hmm. opportunity because you look at, I, I can't remember if it's Canada or the States. We're going to have to fact check this. You're going to have to pay attention to the show notes when this episode comes out. But I think it's Walmart. It's either the, in Canada or the U.S. They're closing all of their tire and lube centers. Okay. I hadn't heard that. Okay. And I think, you know, this has always been like that thing in the car space where it's like, we're sick and tired of all these companies taking potential business away from us. But I just see like, there's a massive opportunity here. If I could just increase the 
quality of my communication with my market, I can really maximize on the fact that Walmart is closing everything down. Um, I mean, aside from the fact that there's going to be a ton of free agents out there that I can employ, but also mm -hmm. just an opportunity of that customer base who was used to going to Walmart to get those types of services done, to capture them and capture them right now and to do it in a way that nobody else is doing it. What would most companies do? I think you and I both know they're going to write this big, long page. They're going to put a new page on their site. Like, why create a 12 second video that it just explains clearly now yours does your, your software does something unique because it, it not only creates a, a I guess a landing page or a personalized landing page but you can also like attach these into an email or send it right from an app right you got it yeah so what I mean typically what we see is is a lot of times it's just driven right from the CRM experience so on the front of the side of you know if you're using dealer socket or leads or whoever your CRM right. once the video is recorded it just merges right within the CRM and it automatically goes out within their template so it's tracked properly um, same thing on the SMS side and then uh, for the service departments um, a couple of things sometimes use our platform oftentimes they'll attach it to the MPI or whatever platform they're using so we have uh, a seamless integration that makes it super easy to put those videos in there uh, you know we create really the mechanism to record and, and have the content um, tons of analytics and the distribution of all that and it's really based on what the dealer's looking for in terms of how it's pushed out but um, you know going back to some of the, the things you're talking about in terms of these videos yeah I, I, I still feel like there's a huge opportunity on the automated content side, whether you're on the service department or the front end, you know, cause if you've, if any dealer right now and I, every, I mean, I, I've been working with these guys for a long time and I still find these situations where if you just go out and secret shop yourself, everyone's saying they're doing it, but if you actually do it and you really get the, the communication that your dealer's sending to you, or if you go to the service department and you request an appointment and you get those emails back in. I mean, forget about the video right now. Just simply auditing the communication, make sure that the cadence delivered in the right time. I just secret shopped. Uh, I was working with a buddy of mine. Uh, he runs uh, 12 rooftops. And we were secret shopping a few of his stores down in the Florida area. And they all were on the same cadence. I received, as a new lead, five emails within about four and a half minutes that all had conflicting things, wrong information. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, I mean, and if I'm a real shopper, I'm a ton of other sites. I'm so damn confused from that, that I'm already probably moving on. And so I think a lot of it is while, while video is a key component and it can clean a lot of that communication up, just a simple audit. I think what you find, and, and sometimes we get into it ourselves here, right? So we have, you know, from a software company, we have forms, you can sign up for a free trial or a demo and those things can get away from you, right? Because these things are automated and you forget about them. You know, a lot of uh, our customers, a lot of our dealers are saying, well, we're not using autoresponders. And that's not true, right? We're seeing on average sometimes, maybe they, someone pushes a button, but this can content and it's going out. Sometimes we're seeing on average 20 to 30 per store. Right. And there's just a huge opportunity to clean that community. So it goes back to communication. It just, that is either the first front on how you're engaging a new customer on the front end of the side, or if it's a service customer for the first time. So you just bought a car, you're going into the drive. It's this experience to where you're, you know, you just, maybe you're excited. You just bought a car and the whole thing is a mess because it was communicated poorly. Yeah. And I think that's where it goes back to there, There's a lot more we can be doing for those customers to make that, that experience much better. It, here's what I love about what you just said. And by the way, I am, I'm not, doing Facebook messenger or playing uh, Sudoku or I don't know, <laughs> taking notes. You know, one of the things that good, you, um, the, the DPB gang, man, they know that I take ferocious notes. Um, I love it. You know, I love just soaking up as much as I possibly can. One of the things you talk about is something that needs to be sexier than it is. And, and that is the secret shop, like the audit. I get it. We're all business people. We don't like the word audit, you know, because usually, especially when it has to do with the IRS or yeah. CRA or something like that. But I mean, just bringing it to the the foundation, you know, and, and auditing, like, I love what you said about um, making sure that the communication you're sending out is where you want it to be. I mean, and this is an ongoing thing. I think as, as you're moving as a company, you, you like you said, you do lose sight of how quickly bad communication can compound or a poor process can compound. But to actually take the time, you used a word I love, which is engage your customers. But I think bringing it back to the level that you're talking about, if you are concerned as a, as a dealer owner, 
general manager, general sales manager, whatever, a leadership in your business. If you're concerned about the level that your team is engaging with customers, we need to also bring this back and, and do what, what you're talking about, Jason, is like, but how engaged are you actually? How engaged are you as the leader? Um, and are you auditing this? You know, I find it with, with my client partners and a lot of clients that we do auditing for, um, they have no clue. Some of them have never had to purchase a vehicle as a customer before in their entire lives. They That's actually cool. have no clue. You know, they're a second, third, sometime, now fourth gen dealer owner. Um, and look, you know, for those listening, we're not here to razz on you, but this is, I, I hope I'm stressing the importance here of what Jason's saying. Like, you need to make sure that the level of communication that you're sending out doesn't, if it rubs you the wrong way, guess what? Chances are, it's probably rubbing your customers the wrong way. And that like, to right. me is just one of the easiest things that you can fix. Yeah. You know, look, and you're right. We're not rats, but we're trying to help them solve a problem, right? If we're just telling them everything they already know, then and look, there's and cream. Plenty, plenty of listeners are like, Hey, look, I, we're doing it all the time. You're an idiot. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I just, I just would suggest maybe you're not though. Right. A great example. So we're a software company. I would say, you know, if you look at how we run the business, it is um, very methodical from the systems we use, our CRM, automation on emails. It is dialed in. We have a department that's focused on it full time. And we had made some adjustments on our follow-up cadence, right? So let's take it out of the dealer world. Let's put it on our side. Um, and it went from the rep a little bit more on the rep, rep and much less on the marketing. So the rep was controlling more of their follow-up and marketing sort of had dropped off. And what ended up happening is the rep didn't own it as much as they should have. Right. Marketing's automated stuff stopped going out. And so you essentially had an experience, which was our, our trial, we have a 14-day trial, where there wasn't a whole hell of a lot of engagement. Uh, I can't remember how long it went on. It had to have been a month or two. And um, th these are things that it can easily slip up, right? So to your point, it's it's these are things to where if if they're doing it on a monthly basis and and they feel good about it, they're ahead of the curve, right? Hell, they're ahead of me, I guess, at some point. But at, at the end of the day, like those are the communications that truly do matter, especially, okay, if you go back to the front end, uh, the first engagement oftentimes is that email, right? Because they're on your website, they're submitting an internet inquiry. It, it, that is oftentimes the very first sort of experience they get other than your web presence. So it feels like a real communication and that, that really matters. And so just reviewing those things, once again, video or not, will have a huge impact. And I think the same thing goes on the service side. I see it actually less on the service side, um, probably much more on, on the front end, but yeah, there's just, there's an opportunity there to basically do almost no work to create a much better experience for the customers. So there's no reason not to look at it. I love it too, from a kind of a different angle, which is, you know, cause you're kind of alluding, or I'm at least picking up on the, the idea that there is a novelty to this. Like there is the, the, the fact that not everybody is going to do this. And even though we've been, talking video, video. I'm, I mean, guys, come on. Like video has existed since the turn of the century. Like you ever heard of Charlie Chaplin? Like, <laughs> you know, silent video, but, but we talk about it like it is this new thing. And that, that is because of this kind of different angle with video. And that is those that do it are going to stand out above the pack because there is a very real barrier to video. And that is that people don't like the way they look on video. They're afraid of video, et cetera. Well, not to prey on their weakness, but because that will always be an issue, you have a very real opportunity to stand up and stand out against the 250,000 car sales professionals in the United States. We're seeing it time and time again, the ones who step out in front of video and face the very real fear of just like building that muscle and doing it. Um, they're the ones that people remember. They're the ones that stand out. I mean, heck, you know, it was, uh, it was one of your stalwart, uh, you know, PR marketing specialists who sent me a co video on LinkedIn and then sent me an email. And I'm like, I can't ignore that. There's no way to, to ignore this. It's so personalized. Yeah. I think she was holding up a sign with my name on it. Like, you got to understand the people that break out and do that, there's a real opportunity here for you to really dominate in your market. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm looking at it to this point to where it's, it's almost not if it's, it's like when, yes, yeah, it's, it's some, mm. we're, the, the rise we're seeing in terms of um, how incredibly important video is to the communication process. Um, there's going to be become a time to where if you're not doing it, it'll be one of the few that who's not right. So it, it's better to get on early, but I, I would say now it, we've almost, we're getting into the, 
the majority of, of the market, right? So it's no longer early adopters. You're finding a lot of people that typically were uncomfortable are becoming a lot more comfortable because they have to. Right. So we coach uh, our customers through a number of different ways. So the first thing is um, the car itself, right? So if you're on the sell side of the business, right on the front end, a vehicle walk around. So when you don't have to put your cam- your, the, f- the camera on your face, which we recommend, right? Because you yep. can do your face and switch sure. it. Even if you're just trying to get comfortable, um, you know, a professional sales rep knows that vehicle and can deliver a great word track over the top of just walking around it. And that helps alleviate some of the early anxiety. And mm-hmm. the same thing on, on the service drive, right? Which is, look, you're just document, document and repair that you do all day long. You're a factory trained uh, technician. You know this better than anybody. And you're just using the word track that you've used a million different times. That makes it much easier for them. Um, and then the other thing that we get into is if, if there is some early anxiety around just having your face on the camera, it goes back to some of those automated videos. Look, there is, you talked about it, it's, it's incredibly personal to where if you're getting a video and because essentially when you get it, there's an animated GIF plan. So you, when you pull the email, you see the first five seconds looking through. So if you have a whiteboard with your name on it, that's way more engaging than just saying, hey, thank you for contacting and right. then skipping over the name. But yeah. it's still better than plain text, even if you're canning the video. So there's a number of things that I think you know, someone can do to help alleviate some of that anxiety. By the way, side note here, I just got to throw in one of these. <laughs> because, and I get it, the, the founder it, it of the animated I yeah. couldn't tell. My, my, like these that was applause. It, that was fake applause. That was cool. applause, yeah. Fa- the I fake applause, the, the Cosby <laughs> show, fake applause, yeah. Um. <laughs> Nice. Because you said GIF, and I am in the GIF club. And I know there's those that say GIF, and I know the founder of the uh, GIF just sounds so much better. I, so it that, does. that's why you get the applause. I don't there. know why. I've always said it that way. GIF. I mean, I it did, sounds like a peanut butter. Yeah, isn't exactly. there a peanut butter brand called GIF? We actually have a social media video where we went and interviewed our entire team, and it's it's. <laughs> contentious right it's a big deal but yeah well, what did you find was it like a 50 50 yeah it would have been awkward if you were the gif guy because then we'd have five minutes of pissing around with that and everyone would be dropping off you, so you would have got one of these let's on. see what do, what do i have here you <laughs> no no there, there we go. that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a nerd. oh my gosh um <laughs> i love what you're saying though like just about alleviating kind of that early anxiety about getting on video Spelling it out this way, I think, is super helpful for people, right? Like, hey, maybe you're not comfortable with your face, but there are other things you can do that are going to be, you know, way better than doing nothing at all. And that's kind of the point of this. I love that this is a mechanism that gets you moving, right? And I think you you probably see it all the time. The more movement that that somebody puts into this or the more time they invest into it, they get better and they get better and they get better and they and they get clarity. So that leads me to my next question for you. How maybe because we know I, I mean, we could probably list off in the next 10 seconds, 100 different typical ways that people are using this. We've already talked about service and canned video and and automation. Are there any outside the box examples that you've seen your customers using this that have that have maybe gone above and beyond as far as response goes? You know, that's it's a great question. I'm trying to think here. Um, okay, I got one for you. I would say, I don't know if I've ever seen it before the pandemic. It's something we've talked about a lot, but we're actually seeing some F&I departments doing some menu presentations for some of their remote mm-hmm. buyers, right? Because a lot of times when you when you do a transaction to a distance buyer, they never make it to the store. A lot of times there's not a trade, right? And if there is, you know, you're having dealers going and, and sending a, a carrier to go pick up the vehicle, right? And actually do the trade, do the entire transaction remote. Right. Um, you find the penetration on products and FNI is incredibly low, right? I don't know if it's just, they're not getting them on the phone. It's just, there's a breakdown of like getting the, the car sold and then getting handed over to FNI and getting them on the phone. And so what we're seeing and what we really coach our dealers through and what we're seeing them do, um, especially in the pandemic hit, which is a very, very quick, you know, one to two minute videos of some of their, their key components on their FNI product list and on the menu and sending that out uh, along with the personalized introduction video and penetration went through the roof. Wow. Uh, just because they were able to actually do their job and, and pitch their product. You know, and this really feeds into the narrative uh, of this emerging post COVID world where it's like, we need to think outside the box. Everybody's talking digital retail and and this sort of a thing. I'm kind of in the remote retail 
camp where I'm like, hey, there are things you can do today. And this is one of those things. I love that you're talking about F and I and just something as simple. It's so simple. It's yet so outside the box. Like, hey, well, why don't we leverage something like this to get in front of people? I love too because it's software and I'm a big nerd that you're going to be able to start get understanding more about how it's resonating with the audience. Like what's the open, are people opening it? Are they receiving it? Are they, you know, like it eliminates a lot of that guesswork that I think creates hostility in the business world. They're, they're not, they're not replying. They're, they've totally seen it where now you can be like, no, they actually didn't see it. Right. You know, and I love that because then it, it introduces a whole layer of empathy into the whole conversation that I think sometimes in, in our cutthroat industry, we are void of. Right. Sure. Well, one thing that was really interesting too, is that, you know, as the, you know, these small little F and I presentations were being sent through video, um, you know, the F and I manager was getting notifications back on how often a video was viewed. Right. So if they sent a a series of, and the, 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 menu presentations, those weren't personalized, right? They were just recorded once and then sent out over and over. But if you see an individual viewing the same video over and over again, rewinding, watching certain parts, that, that call is incredibly easy because you know exactly which product is right. where they're interested, how to get that conversation pinpointed, how to make them comfortable and get it closed. Um, I would say the, the thing that I like even better than that is getting them on a Zoom. Um, I've heard uh, some of our customers have, have done it well. Others haven't as much. I don't know if there's just a disconnect on getting it set up or getting the customer actually join it. I, I think if you can get them live on video, there's an incredible power to that. Um, but for those times you can't, the next best thing is definitely recording that menu presentation and out there. Look, I, I think penetration was, was, I mean, as low as it possibly can be without something like that, you, you were fine and they were pretty much given up on F and I products, at least a lot of our customers that we talked to. And it's just a great way to be able to sell F and I during a tough time. I mean, showrooms are open and, and it's probably much easier to get people in, but look, people still want to buy remote. They still want to buy distant and, and there's a way to, to still drive some F and I revenue, which is where a lot of the profit comes from using video. Yeah. And, and the nice thing about video is that it's safe and you can see my whole face. I don't have to talk to you with the face mask on. Yeah, exactly. Right? And so there's, there's just so much value in video. I, I, I hope those listening, if you're not doing video yet, you, you really make a plan here and say, Hey, there's an opportunity here for me. I'm constantly looking at ways that I can go above and beyond. I mean, it's, it's right here. It's right in front of you. What a, what a novel idea, this thing that we've had for a hundred years that you can be leveraging in a very real way. And, and guess what? If you were looking for that reset, it's here. COVID has provided us with a very real reset where you can start fresh and be who you want to be. doesn't matter who you were yesterday or pre COVID. You can actually be like, no, here's the, here's the plan I am going to execute on. It includes video. It includes a proper follow-up sequence. It includes all this automation. Um, It includes, I love what you're talking about uh, live video. I think we're going to talk a little bit more about that in our DPB pro community. If you have not yet joined the group, Man, you're missing out. There's a lot of cool, positive, like-minded conversation going on in there. And of course, we have exclusive cuts from the podcast uh, featured inside of that group exclusively. So if you want to get access to what Jason and I are going to talk about next and what you can be doing right now and leveraging these tools to a greater degree, that's going to be over in the Facebook community, the DPB Pro community. Jason Price, man, thanks so much for joining me on the Dealer Playbook Podcast. How can those listening get in touch with you? Uh, just check us out on our website. It's covideo.com. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have a 14 day free trial. I encourage you to, to sign up for it. You'll get free unlimited access to the system um, and just get out there and record a couple of videos. And I think you're going to love uh, the responses and feedback you get. Boom. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks, man. I'm Michael Cirillo, and you've been listening to the Dealer Playbook Podcast. If you haven't yet, please click the subscribe button wherever you're listening right now. Leave a rating or review and share it with a colleague. If you're ready to make big changes in your life and career and want to connect with positive, nurturing automotive professionals, join my exclusive DPB Pro community on Facebook. That's where we share information, ideas, and content that isn't shared anywhere else. I can't wait to meet you there. Thanks for listening.